Hey everybody, Ian from Novel Music here, and in this video we're going to take a look at Seeds 1.9, some of the big changes, starting with Polymath. Just as a refresher, Polymath is our four-track polyphonic MIDI sequencer that ships with Seeds. It takes a clock input from either Chronology or Suite 16, and it can take four of these clock inputs and sums them together to create the rhythm of the sequence. So right now we hear um, the result of clocks one and two being summed together from chronology is driving this sequence. We can change the likelihood of a trigger. And once you find something you like, you can go ahead and lock it. And it'll repeat over and over again. Once the lock goes a little bit towards the left, You hear now that it's less cyclical. There's some changes being introduced. So as we slide over to the left, it becomes completely random again. You can also change the uh, trigger ratio. That's every other note now being triggered. We could do every three notes. And all the way up to eight, every eight notes. <laughs> we can offset the octave that the sequence is sounding in. Useful for when you're actually using all of the different tracks in Polymath if you want to create a wider frequency range to work with. We also have this expansion parameter. As I turn it up, you can see more and more notes are appearing on the grid. That's creating greater density and polyphony. I can then bring that down to return to the original sequence. Bring it back to off. Now the way Polymath figures out which notes it's going to play is this is configured on the All Tracks tab here. We have two scales that we work with. And right now you can see I have F major and F minor. The uh, scales themselves come from the Ableton collection of scales that you'll find throughout their own devices, but I've also included four user-defined scales where you can actually pick which notes you'd like to work with. Once you have these set up, you can then decide to change the offset of the notes within the scale. So listen to that effect. As you can see, that the relationship between the notes is essentially staying the same. All we're doing is moving where the starting point in the scale uh, the notes are. When it's at 100%, it's a full octave higher. 100% negative is an octave lower. And in the middle is the original. We can invert the notes. And unique to Polymath, you can actually move between the two different scales that you've configured on the All Tracks tab, uh, either just jumping from one scale to another with the slider or moving in between slowly or just putting it in the middle to get different pitch collections. Once I hear something I might like, I'll lock it. Once things are locked, you can still change the various parameters and they will stay in place. And to control each sequence, we have the position, steps, shift parameters, and reset. And that's what's new in this edition of Polymath. So if I go to the octave lane, you can see that this number of steps do not match the ones from the notes line. So I can now create what we would call polymetric sequence. So let's try that out. I'm gonna do a seven step sequence here and I'll just fill in some values and let's see what we get. Mm -hmm. 
This essentially makes the sequence much longer because it will take quite a long time for both sequence playheads to be on step one together again. So if you think of it this way, if it were two instruments playing together, what we have is one instrument playing in one time signature, another instrument playing in another, and that's why we call it polymetric. And this extends to all of the lanes now in seeds, polymath, including the velocity lane, so we can kind of create a different quasi-trigger sequence. Every time the velocity is zero, we won't get one of the notes firing. You can even change the number of steps with that. Play around with the duration lane. Ratchets. And pitch bend. A lot of possibilities here. If, however, we would like polymath to behave as it usually did, we have this link parameter here so we can actually decide to have the lanes link with the note lane. So that's what this is referring to. So I can turn it on and off. Now it will always sound the same each iteration. The other big addition I'd like to go over with Seeds version 1.9 is the addition of scale quantization with Hub. Hub is Seeds MIDI sender receiver utility device. It also sends and receives clock signals. But now that we can use the scale quantize feature, we can turn this into essentially a MIDI harmonizer, creating an extra thickness to the output from the polymath sequencer, the model sequencer. So let's set this up. We're gonna send MIDI on a, B, and C, essentially the same MIDI notes copied uh, three times. We're going to receive it on there, and what we get so far is just a single stream of notes. However, if we go to pitch, and let's change this to plus 7 and this to plus 15, now we should get these nice widely spaced triads. And I'm just inputting single notes here. This works really well with an arpeggiator. It's kind of a fun trick. And with the scale quantization, we have all of the scales that we would normally expect to see uh, in the live ecosystem. And that's an overview of the biggest changes in Seeds version 1.9. It's a free update for existing customers. And if you haven't checked out Seeds yet, please visit novelmusic.org where you'll find extensive video tutorials on all the devices and a comprehensive manual. Thanks for watching this video, and please consider subscribing to this channel. 